Bible and go to Mark, book of Mark. <clears throat> And uh, I want to put a little challenge to some of you young people, uh, young people meaning young people, <laughs> and, uh, and I want to challenge you young people, uh, memorize the books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, right on through all the way to Revelation. And it's not hard to do, you can do it, and you get all them books in your head, and the pa pa pastor says turn to Jude, you know right where to go. You know, right where to go. And if you're a brand new Christian, that's the first thing you want to start doing is just open up the table of contents in the front of the Bible, and you'll see it has it in order, and do Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Get that down good. Say it over and over. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Just keep saying it until you got it. And then go four more. Add four more to it until you're done with the all 20, what is it, 26, 27, 27 books in the New Testament. And then get all that done, and you get that down, then you start working on the Old Testament. And that takes you a little longer, but you can do it. You can do it in, a, you can do it in an hour. All right, Mark chapter 7 and verse uh, 24. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord God, we come to you now, and uh, thank you once again for the privilege, really, of coming here and having a Bible to look at. We don't know what the future is going to do in the next few years. It's looking pretty... Pretty scary in some areas, Lord, and I know each day we go about our business and we enjoy this life and we plan our plans and we eat well and we enjoy each other's company, And but I don't know how long that's going to go. And I pray, God, we start making use of the days that you do give us. We think about what might be on the rise coming, what might be coming, Lord, and I pray, God, that you do uh, Give us the liberties and the freedoms that we enjoy now and prolong them as long as possible. I know that you have a schedule to keep and we know you're going to allow whatever you've got to allow to bring this thing to according to your will. And uh, God, just uh, help us to number our days and be aware that it might not always be this easy and this good. Stay busy while we've while we got the opportunity to do it. Pray now you bless the message. I pray you help me to be... Uh, a good minister of the Word of God, and I pray you guard my lips from error and might I speak truth. And uh, I pray, God, that it uh, be effective to your people and be pleasing to thee. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Mark chapter 7, if you will, and we'll look at verse 24. And the Bible says here, And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon, most of you probably know where that is. I draw it on the map often. Uh, it's on the Mediterranean Sea. It's north of Galilee. Galilee is far north in Israel. Galilee is the top portion of, of, uh, of uh, Israel, and, and Tyre and Zidon are above that. They're all the way up to a little region called Phoenicia. And Tyre and Zidon during this time was in uh, Phoenicia. And right on the other side of Phoenicia is uh, Syria. So if you were in the border, you would be a Syrophoenician. And that's who this lady is. Uh, and it says here, From thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon and entered into a house. A lot of time he'd go to a synagogue, but this time he's in a house and would have no man know it. So he's trying to get away from the crowd. But he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. We say all the time, What am I, a dog? What am I not here? What am I chopped meat? We'll say stuff like that. And uh, that's what he tells her. He says, oh, you're, a, you're a dog. I'm not, here to, I'm not here to help you. I'm here to help Israel. She's a Greek. And the Bible says there, verse 28, And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. She agreed with that. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way. The devil has gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come home to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. 
So the Bible says that Jesus, he goes from the Sea of Galilee, that region there, all the way up north, northwest to the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And he tried to be hid because he was just being mobbed by the people because of all the words that he spoke and all the things that he did. I mean, you know how news spreads by mouth, man. It goes quicker than, than wire sometimes. And uh, so his fame was spreading everywhere, and people were thronging and mobbing. And he thought, let me just get in the house and try to get some relief, and maybe I can deal with a smaller crowd. Uh, it didn't matter. The news had spread to this woman. Uh, being a Syrophoenician, I would guess her location was probably north of, the, of Tyre and Zidon a little bit. She might have had to travel 30, 40 miles to get to the place where he was. And as she would go toward that area, uh, she would just stop every five miles or so and say, uh, anybody hear about Jesus? And she had no trouble for people going, he's over there. <laughs> so she would just keep meeting her way as she went. And she finally uh, found the place where he was. And uh, uh, how did the news get to her? Uh, somebody had shouted, somebody had said something. Uh, she heard the rumor, she heard the roar of the people. She knew that this Jesus that everybody's talking about is near. And for her, it was a very beautiful time for her to make use of the fact that he was close because her daughter had a demon in her, had a devil in her. And of course, being a mom, she was very concerned for her daughter, as all you moms can relate to that, how heartbreaking it was for her to see her daughter be abused like that. And uh, everybody would tell her which way to go, and she had good direction, and she got there. And uh, I can remember, for me, it was a fellow named Mike Moore. And Mike Moore had gotten saved, and uh, he came and told me about Jesus. And I didn't know anything about him, but he told me. And he made, he, made, uh, Jesus, he made Jesus appealing to me. He put him in a good light. He put Jesus in a good light. And uh, he said some things about the Lord because he had a personal relationship with God. And I didn't have it, so he was able to put Jesus in a real good light for me. It almost made me want to check it out a little bit. And, uh, and so uh, this woman hears the news that he's in this house, and she finds him out. And she finds out that, uh, that he has a reputation of healing people. She finds out he has some power to cast out devils, which she had a direct problem with being her daughter was in that condition. And she believed in her heart that Jesus Christ was able to do this thing. And uh, so she makes the trip and she does everything she can to get there. And the Bible says in John 20, uh, I'll read it for you, it says, these were, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And uh, she wanted that. Uh, she did believe, and she hears that there is a man that is from heaven and that he has the power to heal and cast out devils, and this really got her interest. And so she makes the trip, uh, kind of like we looked at this morning about the Queen of Sheba making the trip down to see Solomon. This woman makes her way down to find Jesus in the, in the borders of Tyre and Zidon. And the news she heard about him must have been very convincing to her. Uh, she was going to find him no matter what it took. Uh, this was her only hope. It was her only chance. There wasn't any other means of curing her daughter from this problem. There was no man that she knew of that could do anything. There was no doctor. There was no money she could spend. Uh, all her resources were of, of zero effort. She, this was her only hope, her only chance. And so uh, she pulls out all the stops and makes the trip. I'm sure she called in sick from work. Uh, I'm sure she got in her Tesla and drove down there to find a place. And uh, uh, in Acts chapter 17, uh, the Bible says this in verse 26, And made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, that's what she did, to seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. The Bible said the Lord's not far from every one of us. And if you want to find him, you have to feel after him. And he's not hard to find. He can be had. He can be found. And uh, so she makes this trip. Uh, it's probably an overnighter for her. She's probably planning on spending the night in a hotel somewhere. And uh, she had to make the preparation for the trip. And uh, she would stop and just find out by asking people 
uh, uh, that's what women do. Men don't do that. Men don't want to ask nobody anything. Uh, we've been tricked too many times, so we don't ask them. But my wife's always telling me, ask, ask. He'll tell I said, no, nah, I can ask that guy. Uh, he'll tell me to go over here, and I'll go over there, and it won't be there. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, she's a lady, so she does it. She asks, and she finally gets where she's supposed to go. And uh, uh, would you like the Lord Jesus Christ to work in your life? Yeah, I, I would. Uh, you can see the effort she goes to to get her way. It's not just bless me, Lord, and uh, make it you know make it easy. Uh, she was willing to spend and be spent to have the Lord do something for her. And uh, would you be willing to trust enough? Would you willing to believe enough? Would you be willing to make the effort enough to have God move in your life? Uh, maybe you have no need, but uh, she didn't have a need other than her daughter. And her daughter was the thing that caused her to do this unselfish act. This act was not for her. This act was strictly for the daughter. Uh, and, uh, and the Bible says there in verse 25, and it says, For a certain woman whose young daughter, and calls her a young daughter, probably uh, like these girls here, maybe in their teen years, uh, maybe 15 and 16 years old, maybe something like that. She's still at home. She wasn't a young woman. If she was grown, she'd probably been away from the home. But she's still in the home, so she's young enough to be home. And I would guess her to be maybe something like Natalie or Leah, somewhere around there. And, uh, and the Bible says there that she was a young daughter. And the Bible says that she had an unclean spirit. Uh, and, of course, when you say unclean spirit, that means an unholy spirit. That means a devil, and that's what it was. And it was in the girl. And uh, the Bible says about this mom, she fell at his feet. So when she finally sees him, uh, she gets in front of him and falls down on her knees and just falls prostrate. Head is down, hands are out. She's hoping with all her heart to get his attention and hopefully that he will give her some attention and, uh, and do something uh, according to her desire. Uh, you can picture it if you can, this woman, the Lord Jesus standing maybe in this house trying to maybe preach to people or tell people about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And here she comes in this house, and uh, I don't know if she just broke through the door. Uh, what she did, she probably came in nicely. She probably came in decently. She wasn't a forceful woman. She wasn't had, had that strong spirit. She had a very meek, mild woman. And she came in and she prostrate. She fell herself prostrate before Jesus Christ. And everybody's looking and no one else is bowing, but she is. The Jews weren't bowing. Probably should have been, but she was. And so she falls at his feet and she's in great need and she cannot be denied. Her little girl is on her heart. And it is not uh, she that needs the help. It's, it's the daughter that needs the help. And so uh, she makes this trip. It's, uh, it's a, 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 a vision that we, excuse me, that we get of her as she, she humbles herself. She falls down like that and bows to him. Uh, it's a humbling thing. She pleads with him and uh, prays him that he might uh, do her this favor. And she finds him surrounded by many people, and she might have said, Sir, sir, please, uh, my daughter is filled with a, with a demon. Uh, could you please help her? And uh, Jesus looks at her, and he sees that. And uh, I, I know what the Bible says about how God feels about humility. And when he sees her in that humble position, I'm sure uh, he wasn't uh, quick to dismiss her. Uh, when he saw that, he liked it. He probably thought, well, wow, look at that. She's bowing. She obviously believes in me. She thinks I have more power than a devil has. Why would she ask me to get rid of a devil if she didn't know that I could be successful in that effort? And uh, so he's impressed. I, I would only guess that he's impressed with her position. He's impressed with her faith. Uh, and uh, so he likes what he sees, but, of course, he's not there to do that. He's there for another reason. Uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, Yea, all of you uh, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. And so grace is available uh, through humble acts. You might remember that sometime. Uh, most Christians, when they pray, they bow. Uh, every once in a while, I'll be sitting in my house, and I've got a nice, comfortable chair, and I've got a recliner thing, and I pull the button, and that thing comes out, and I lay back, and I'm nice and comfortable, and then every once in a while, my phone will ring, or it'll show me that I have a text. 
And I'll look at it, and some, some of you will say, urgent prayer request. So-and-so's going through this. And I'll look at it, and I'll close my eyes, and I'll be laying back in that chair, and I'll say, Lord, I can't do this. I pull the thing in. I get out of my chair. I get down on my knees and pray for that person. Now, I don't usually respond to the text. I don't send the little praying hands. I don't always... <laughs> Respond, and that's good to do. Don't I, 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 If you do it, do it. I, I don't normally. They've asked prayer. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right then because I'm going to, I know me, I'll forget. And I'm going to do it. And I usually when I read it, I can see it's an urgent thing. I can see it's somebody's really going through it. But my point is that I can't, I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable laying back and going, now, Lord, please. It just doesn't sit. It doesn't sit well. And it didn't sit well with her. She could have went in there and said, oh, listen, Lord Jesus, let me reason with you. No, she's down. She's down. And uh, take note there because he does, he does like that a lot. The Bible says he resists the proud but gives grace uh, to the humble. There is something very spiritual about bowing to him. And, uh, and it's a good thing to do. Uh, I found him, I found Jesus Christ in August of 1971, and I found him on my knees. That's the position I was in when I got saved. And I'll never forget that day. It's a very precious thing to me. And the Lord, uh, I found that verse to be true, that he gives grace to the humble. And the Bible says she besought him. It says that she fell at his feet, and, uh, and then it says that she, uh, uh, let's see, where does it say that? Um, Heard of him, uh, verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And the Bible says she asked. She doesn't tell. She's not forceful in any way. She's hopeful that he'll listen to her, what she has to say. And she did not know if he would. She believed with all her heart that he could, but she did not know if he would. And uh, so she asked. And, uh, and uh, her manner was meek, her words were well chosen, her spirit is right, and uh, he sees it and he deals with her. And uh, she reminds him, uh, or well, it, it reminds me of him dealing with that woman at the well, because it was kind of like that, but this woman was even more humble than that. The only thing that bothers me about the scene that we read about right now is what happened? Why did it, what, the daughter, where did she get the devil? The devil was in that little girl, and he didn't want to leave. And there wasn't anything that she could do to get him to leave. I'm sure she prayed for the daughter. Maybe she saw an exorcist. I don't know what she did. But that daughter was filled with the devil. It makes me wonder how she got in that condition. What was she doing to invite that spirit in her? Uh, was she listening to rock and roll music? Was she messing with Ouija boards? Was she going to the nearest palm reader in town? Was she seeing hypnotism? I don't know what she was doing. But what was she doing? Uh, maybe the mom had something to do with it. Maybe the mom didn't put a stop to it when she knew she should have. Maybe she knew the daughter was dealing with something that she shouldn't be dealing with. And maybe when she saw uh, this demon come into her and her daughter's kindness and sweetness was changed to meanness and harshness, and she saw that there was a different spirit in her, and she saw that she was no longer a sweet girl, and she no longer laughed at things that were good to laugh at. Now it was mean and harsh, and she could see the spirit. And, uh, and I don't know. I don't know. I can only guess, but I know this much. That little girl had a demon in her. And it came in here for a reason. And I don't know how. It doesn't say. But maybe this mom felt a little responsible. Maybe it was part of the reason why she was willing to go to great lengths to find Jesus. I don't know. I can't say. Maybe it was the daughter's own doing. Maybe the, maybe the mom did everything she could to help her little girl uh, get around the things that she saw she was messing with. I don't know. Uh, but I know this much, uh, being uh, someone, I'm an older man now, and I've dealt with people and been a pastor for a long time. Uh, the ladies have a rough time laying down the law sometimes. It's real hard for the ladies, to, to, to the moms in the house. It's not so hard for the man, but a lot of times he's off to work, and 
sometimes uh, daughters will do some things and, uh, or even young boys in the house will do some things that, that are, are unhealthy. And mom knows it, but just doesn't want to put the, put, put the foot down. Doesn't want to uh, do anything that will hurt the poor little child. But remember, if you don't want to hurt the child, the devil will. So take note, take note, and do what you can to protect your little ones before something like that happens. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so quick to put your little girls in miniskirts. I wouldn't be so quick to send them off to, with their friends to the rock concert. I wouldn't be so quick to let them spend the night to places where you don't even know the people that they're spending the night with. I, I know the daughters ain't going to like it, and I know the boys ain't going to like it. But if you're a caring mother, you want to protect your children. And uh, don't, you know, uh, don't let your, your kindness uh, interrupt good discipline in the home. You, you got to do it if you love your kids. The Bible says if you love your children, chasten them be times. Be times means early, before time. Uh, chasten them and discipline them. I, I like a well-run house. I like, I like to see kids uh, respectful, mannerly. I like that. That shows someone in the house doesn't just let them run around like heligans, hooligans, heligans, whatever it is. Amen. But got some order going on. And I don't know how this woman felt, but I do. It does bother me as to this poor little girl has been affected with this demon. And now mom's doing everything she can to find the Lord to try to get the problem solved. And uh, this woman looks up at Jesus Christ. And as Jesus Christ looks at this woman, I'm sure he sees the hope that's in her eyes. I'm sure she sees uh, something in her face that is very serious, and uh, he, he wants with all his heart to help her, uh, but he's not there to do that. And uh, he, he knows there's nothing else for her to do. There's no place else for her to go to solve her problem. No one else can solve her problem but him. And uh, so it's a situation uh, that's difficult for him to look at. And I talk to people all the time about situations in their life uh, most of the time, they're seeking counsel because the world doesn't have an answer for them. Uh, they look to me sometimes because I know some Bible and I can maybe give them some direction from the Bible or tell them what God would say or uh, give them some counsel that is spiritual. And the reason for that is because uh, there's a lot of problems in this life uh, that we don't know what we can do about it, nothing we can do about it. We just have to hope we know God well enough uh, to beseech him, find him, and get his uh, willingness to help. And, uh, and, and don't always know what's on his agenda or who he's trying to reach, but uh, we're hopeful that he would uh, uh, be uh, responsive to our prayers. And uh, there's people in situations right now at, in our church a uh, little Rocco boy is sick. Uh, Brother DeMichael, I think we mentioned it this morning, had a whole list of some people, mentioned a lot of them this morning, so I won't uh, do it again tonight. But uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very needful thing to beseech the Lord about. Uh, Miss Vondell's down, and, uh, of course, I'm out of vanilla ice cream, so uh, a real tragedy. And, I, of course, I speak as a fool. I'm, I'm being, being stupid, but uh, I don't have a problem. But there's family members uh, in, my, in my household, not my household, but in my family that do. And this lady is unselfish. She is um, thinking about her. Uh, she's not thinking about herself. She doesn't really have a, a need uh, like that, but the, but the daughter does. And the Bible says in verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nature, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus had come to restore the people of Israel back to God. And he was doing miracles for them. And that was his order from the Father. The Father had sent him to Tyre and Zidon to reach Israel. That was his job. That's what he wanted to do was to restore Israel back to God. All those Jews up in Tyre and Zidon needed to see his miracles, needed to see his power, needed to know that he was their Messiah, needed to know he was their Savior. He was the King of the Jews. They needed to know that. But here comes a Greek. If he deals with her, what are they going to think about him? He come to reach them. It's going to be tough to do if he deals with this woman because they know she's a Greek. And they're very racist. You talk about racist. They are very racist. 
Israel does not. Remember what the, what the, what the Samaritan woman said? The, the Jews have no dealings with us Samaritans, and they were half Jewish. And there was still that division between them. How, how is it that you would talk with me, a Samaritan woman, when the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? So what kind of dealings would Jews have with a Syrophoenician? Not much. If Jesus does help this woman, and of course he does, but when he does, as far as reaching Israel, it's about over. In fact, he leaves as soon as he gets done with her. He goes back to Galilee. His work is over there. So it's a real big deal for him to do this. Amen. He goes way out of dispensation. He goes way out of his way. He risks he risk every, everybody else for her. It's, it's really an amazing thing. I, I wouldn't have think he would have done it. I would have thought, no, he's, no way he's going to do this. But he does do it. And he does it because he gives her a little scenario about the children's meat and the, uh, and the dogs uh, don't, shouldn't get the meat uh, that, that the children are given. And she takes the same scenario and says, yeah, uh, but the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the, the children's table. And he, she uses the same scenario and just adds a little bit to it. And she does it in a really well way. So she's got some wisdom, and the Lord give her that wisdom uh, to be able to say those things. Uh, so Jesus comes to restore Israel, but she is in the way, but she's asking nicely, and she wants this thing done. And uh, Jesus does not like a devil messing with people. I know that. And when she says, I got a daughter full of the devil, I'm sure he's thinking, yeah, that guy, boy, he's at it again. I would like to get him out. I'm sure he wanted to get him out, uh, but because of the Jews around, it was a difficult decision for him to make. Uh, and he's, uh, the devil was inside that little girl, and that devil did not want to leave that little girl. And the daughter was controlled by something uh, that was uh, making her not herself. Uh, people say, well, she's not herself today, or he's not himself today. And you say, why are you saying that? Because they're not acting like they usually do. This little girl was a sweet girl at one time. This little girl talked nice. Now she's nasty. Now she's harsh, and there's a spirit in her that's bad. Uh, she has no control of it herself. She is being controlled by something else, and uh, it's, a, it's a very bad situation. And she's sassy. Uh, she's disobedient now, and she's foul-mouthed. Uh, she's dangerous to herself. She's dangerous to others, and the mother sees the change in her and is worried about it. Uh, the mother uh, seems to get the idea that she's picked up a demon. Uh, if you live in San Pedro, uh, you may not think that way, but you should. Uh, you'll see people in San Pedro act in ways that are nasty, act in ways that are mean, act in ways that are not controllable, they're they got a spirit in them. And you may not think, oh, they're full of the devil. You just think, well, they're nuts. Or you may think, oh, they're high or they're on drugs. Or, well, I don't know what you think, but, it, you know, there is a devil. And he is real. And the Bible says so. And he is able to get into people. And he's able to change their personality. He's able to hurt them. He's able to control some things. Amen. And, uh, and uh, for people just to not think that there's a demons in this world is a mistake. There is, there is devils and demons in this world. Uh, I, 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 I see them just about every time I come to San Pedro. I live in Carson. It's an 11-mile drive for me one way. And when I come into Gap, when I come off that freeway and come into Gaffey, I, I'll see two or three people that are not in their right mind. Something has happened to them. makes no sense why they do what they do. Uh, it's an amazing thing to see that. And uh, all, all the, our society will pawn that off as some little ex explanation as to what's going on. But the Bible tells us uh, that it's a, spiritual, it's a spiritual problem that these people have. But mom believes that Jesus Christ uh, can help her little girl, and he's more powerful than devil. And uh, Jesus has uh, not lost his power at all. And we are here in 2021, and we read back of the day that he did this a couple thousand years ago. Time and space doesn't change his power even an ounce. He is just as powerful now as he has ever been 
Nothing can ever change that. If you have a situation in your home or somebody you know about, uh, just realize that Jesus Christ is still your answer. He still is our hope. And he has power over uh, Satan. And the devil is, uh, is uh, uh, controlling this young girl. And there are things that Christians do that uh, show that Satan is messing with them. I, I know, you know, people say, well, Christian can't be possessed with the devil. Well, I, I know their soul can't be possessed with the devil, but the devil can get in their body. And the reason you know that is because in, uh, in uh, Acts, I think it's Acts 4, where Ananias and Sapphira were Christian people, and uh, they were filled with, said they were filled with the, with the devil. And uh, so that, to me, sounds like Christians can have the same problem. It just can't be in the soul. Our soul has got the Spirit of God. We're saved, but the body is another story. And there is a spirit of man that's not the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of man. And it's your attitude. It's your anger. It's your love. It's the things about you that are spiritual. And the devil can mess with that stuff. Uh, so, uh, so the Bible says here in verse 27, but Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. So he lets all those Jews see that he's on their side and he puts them ahead of everybody else. And he says, let the, he tells her and he says it publicly. And I'm, if, if I was him, I'd say it as loud as I could say it. And I'd let, I'd let her know, cause I already know what I'm going to do, but I want all these Jews in this house to know. That I'm putting them on the top rung because that's the way he feels about it. And Jesus said to her, let the children first be filled. And they're, they're, all them Jews are sitting there going, yeah, amen, that's right, brother. And he said, for it is not meat to take the children's bread. And when he says that, it sounds like he's feeding them bread. And of course, we know he's not. Uh, but he's saying that he has something for those children. He has uh, life to give them. That's what bread would do. It would give you, it would give you power, it would give you life of your flesh. And he says, uh, for him, it would be the saving of Israel. It would be to restore them back to God. And he's come there to do that for Israel. And he says, it's not fitting that I should take aside, set them aside for the likes of you, uh, for a dog. And it's not fitting. It's not an appropriate thing for me uh, to be here to meet them and then scrap them for a while just to deal with you. And, uh, and so he says that to her, let the children first be filled. He doesn't say he won't do it. He just says, I'm putting them first. And he says, for it is not, it is not me to take the children's bread, and that would be uh, salvation, I believe, and to cast it unto the dog. Uh, she, he, so he calls her a dog, and uh, she responds to that, uh, and, it, and uh, these days we would call him a racist. Uh, we, uh, of course, he is not. Uh, he has a job to do that involves Israel, and he's after that according to the Father's will, and it was because of Israel that he was being this way, and uh, she says to him when he says, it is not fit to uh, give the children's meat to the dogs. Uh, she says, yay, Lord. She says, yeah, I'm a dog. Boy, that's, that's saying something. Uh, you a sinner? Yay, Lord, I'm a sinner. Amen. You lazy? Yay, Lord, sometimes I'm lazy. You carnal? Yay, Lord, I can be. Because, see, nobody wants to admit all the derogatory things about human nature. But you're all like that. Why not admit it? Why not come to him and face it? Lord, I'm asking for this prayer to be answered, and I got no right to it whatsoever. I don't deserve you to answer this prayer. Just because I'm saved and I become your child, I have carte blanche with you? No. No. I had children. There were times when they asked me for things, and I'd look straight them in the eye and say, after that, two fails on your report card, and you're asking to go to Disneyland? Ain't happening. <laughs> Amen? You're a dog. <laughs> Amen? You, you, you know, uh, but, but I like the way she, I like the way she uh, agrees with him. Yea, Lord, I am a dog. And boy, I tell you, I think a lot of prayers could get answered if people could just understand that if he does answer, it's strictly by his grace. We don't deserve any of his good pleasure. 
Uh, we are there to ask. We are there to hope. And we're even there to say, oh, by the way, you know, the way I was talking the other night and what I was doing the other day, uh, please wash that under the blood, Lord. I, I really want you to help me here. <laughs> uh, but you got to own what you, you got to own who you are. And she did that. And uh, she, uh, he, she says, yes, Lord, I, I'm a dog. I, I agree with you what you're saying there. And, uh, and so he, boy, is, he's taken back by that. Uh, I, I am, I am uh, a dog. Uh, but even the dogs, uh, even the dogs get to eat crumbs. I have fed dogs under the table. I have thrown crumbs to dogs. And I have noticed something very interesting about the dog. It don't matter how small the crumb is, he laps it like it's a T-bone steak. <laughs> Amen? It don't matter how big the portion is, he is on it. <laughs> Amen. He, he, he is not choosy about what you feed him. He take whatever's coming. And, uh, and she, she says, yes, I'm a dog, but even the dogs get the crumbs. And uh, verse 27, he says to her, uh, the, let the children uh, first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And a dog is not too proud to beg. He'll stand there and go. He's not proud to beg. And the owner of the dog, if you're his company, he'll say, stop begging. You know, get away from them. You know, trying to give you a break from the dog. Uh, but the dog's very hungry, and she's like that. And she has more faith in him than every Jew in that house. Uh, she is uh, willing to do whatever it takes more than any Jew in that house. And I wonder if Jesus is thinking the same thing. I sure wish these Israelites would humble themselves like this woman. I sure wish these Israelites would believe in me uh, like this woman. I sure wish these Israelites would accept me uh, like this woman. Uh, so he does want to help her. And uh, the only way he can do it is to uh, just agree with her wisdom. And he pardons this lady. And in verse 29, he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And at that point, she goes, oh. It doesn't say she says thank you. I know she did. She had to. Watching the things that she said up to this point, I, I see that in her. I see her going, oh, Lord, maybe grabbing his arms, I don't know, maybe throwing her head in his chest and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is her little baby that she raised from a little tiny one. And now the word has been said. And now all she has to do is go home and see if it's true. And she knows it is. And the Bible says that she does go home. Uh, what's it say there in verse um, uh, 30? Somebody read it nice and loud. Amen. Uh, so she goes home, runs through the door, and there's the daughter. And she says, hi, Mommy. And she knows right away. Oh, her little spirit is back. Her girlish ways are back. Her sweetness is back. And she is overjoyed. Isn't that a wonderful story? You got somebody in your family lost? Is there someone like that? I know you're okay. That mom was okay. Some in your family is not. Is somebody in your family lost? If they're lost, that means they have a dead soul. If they have a dead soul, that means when they die, their soul goes to hell. And they'll never get out. This woman, wherever she was up in Syrophoenicia, came down to the borders of Tyre and Zidon, went to the trouble to find him, hoping just a hope that he would do it. No guarantees that he would. In fact, the opening line looked pretty bad. When he said, hey, I ain't coming here to deal with you, it looked pretty bad. But she was unrelenting. And uh, I don't know what her prayer life was before she got there, but the words she used with the dogs get the crumbs, man, that was out of heaven. God gave her that. And uh, as she said what she said, and that moved, that moved his heart, and he went ahead and dealt with that woman. I, 
I looked over at the parallel passages in Matthew and uh, Luke, and uh, there was a lot of stuff he did prior to the time that she met him. So I think he got the message to Israel. Uh, but everybody in that house was probably a little upset. If they were Jewish, they were probably a little upset. I don't know what his parting words to them were, but I can only hope that it was something that kept them on the edge. And he left and went back to Decapolis. But my message tonight, all of that was said for one reason. Who's back at the house that's lost? Who in your family doesn't know the Lord? And you do, and you're saved, and you're okay. But they're going to die. And you're probably the best chance they have. When I looked at the message today, I started thinking about my family. And I thought about my aunts and my uncles and grandparents and all that stuff. And a lot of them had gotten saved, but there's a couple of them that aren't. And I was telling my wife, I said, I need to type up some letters. I've got family up in the state of Washington. I've got an uncle up there who's not saved. His wife's not saved. Some of the grandkids, uh, my dad's grandkids up there, they're saved. I talked to the twins. I used to run with them when we were little, Mike and Mark, and they got saved. But my Uncle Harold's not saved. So now I'm thinking of this woman, and that's working on me. So that's not fair that I bear the burden alone. So I want it to burden you, too. I want you to think about your grandma. And I want you to think about your family. I want you to think about your aunts and uncles and anybody that you know of that's probably lost. And try to start praying. Say, Lord... You know, I don't know what her mindset was or what her plans were. Maybe she was thinking, what am I going to say when I see him? I don't know. Uh, but, boy, those lines that she had, they were, they were classic lines. And, of course, they were just spontaneous because he was the one that created the scenario about the dogs. And she came up with that line. That was really cool. I'm sure she was prayed up. Don't know. Don't know. But uh, the message tonight was aimed at your lost loved ones. And hope you think about them tonight and hope you realize that maybe God could use you to help them be delivered. All right, let's all stand.